Hey there booktube, welcome back to my channel. I didn't post my May reading statistics and in the interest of being thorough, I thought I would share them, but who wants to watch a May reading recap in July? So what I'll do is I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison of my May reading statistics and my June reading statistics. How's that? Is that better? So that's what today's video is going to be about. I hope you'll stick around to watch. In May, I read We Are All Weird by Seth Godin, Homegoing by Yagi Yassi, The Power of Broke by Damon John, To Rise Again at a Decent Hour by Joshua Ferris. This is from the library. You can see how it has the plastic over it. The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. This is a pretty short book. Tribes, also by Seth Godin. And Hag Seed by Margaret Atwood. Seven books. In June, I read Small Great Things by Jodi Picoult, How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh, The Icarus Deception by Seth Godin, and Scratch, Writers, Money, and the Art of Making a Living, which is a collection of essays by writers and is edited by Manjula Martin, founder of Scratch Magazine. So these are my June reads, five books. When it comes to my genre breakdown, in May I read three fiction and four nonfiction, while in June I read two fiction and three nonfiction. In May I read seven books, in June my reading plummeted and I only finished five. And this might have been okay, except that there have been months earlier in the year where I read so much more. March was my best reading month where I completed 18 books, April I read 14 books. So my reading in those months pushed my year-to-date number of books pretty high and so I am above the number that I would planned to be at the end of June. So that's fine, I'm not stressed about how many books I have to read, I just would like to complete more books. Anyway, in June I did start a few books that I didn't finish and so those books are going to carry over into July and so hopefully my July statistics will be much improved. And while I wish that I did read more in May and June, there was also a lot of other things happening in other aspects of my life that caused me not to read so much and I'm pretty okay with the balance that my life has where I'm not just sitting at home reading books all the time. I'm actually going out and doing other things. In May I started this daily running challenge where I run every day and so that impacted the amount of free time that I had to, to read but also impacted my energy level. So at night instead of staying up to read sometimes I just fall asleep so I'm pretty okay with these reading statistics the way they are because it does indicate more balance in my life. May's page count was 1,617 pages read while June was pretty much the same 1,612 pages read in June. In May, I read three fiction and four nonfiction. In June, I read two fiction and three nonfiction. One of my goals this year was to read a pretty even split fiction and nonfiction. I do read a lot of business books. I love reading science and history books. And I try to make time also to read, not just for entertainment, but also to read for education and inspiration. But while I do want to make room for reading nonfiction, there will always be room on my TBR for novels. I would always make time to read fiction. In May, I gave a few three stars, a couple of four stars, but I also had one two star read and I had a five star read. My two star read was Seth Godin's We Are All Weird. I've read other Seth Godin books this year and enjoyed most of them, but this one I just didn't connect with as much. My five star read in May was Homegoing by Yag Yassi, which is very interesting that my least enjoyable was a nonfiction and my most enjoyable was fiction. See, I told you I will always make time for fiction because otherwise you never know what you're gonna get, right? In June, I read five books and everything was either a three or four star read, but my most enjoyable read was Small Great Things by Jodi Picoult, and this book I got from my book swap buddy, Derby, from Derby Lane Reading. I was matched with her during the book swap-a-thon, and she sent me that Jodi Picoult novel. I don't DNF a lot of books, so the books that I started and just didn't finish in May or June, I do expect that at some point during the summer, I will complete them. So I expect that my July statistics are going to be a little higher, but you just have to to come on back and see how my reading month goes in July. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what was your best or worst read in the past two months and we'll chat in the comments. And until next time, happy reading. Bye!